Okay, here's a word problem we're going to be working on today. It says an orchestra has twice as many woodwind instruments as brass instruments. There are a total of 150 brass and woodwind instruments. And the problem's asking us two different addition equations for the situation. And to use W for the number of woodwind instruments and B for the number of brass instruments. So all I want to do right now is, we call this defining what our variables stand for. W is woodwind. Instruments is always a good thing to write what the variables stand for and B equals brass instruments. And remember, we could have used any letters except the problem has specifically asked us to use W and B. And that would be typical to write W for woodwinds, B for brass instruments. I wouldn't want to choose I because both of them are instruments. All right, so now the other thing I'm looking at is I know I need to write two different addition equations and I want to look at the information up here. What are some things we could write? What are some facts we could put together? Remember, an equation is just stating some facts. What's equal to something else? What do you see? What do you wonder? What are some keywords we could be looking at? What could you point out from here? Okay. I had an answer, but I had a subtraction. I was having a hard time thinking of two addition ones. Okay, so the best thing then is to write everything down sort of like a brainstorm and see if that gets us going. So wondering if we could maybe think of some subtraction equations and that might help us think. Anything we can do to help us get more information down will help us see things. Maybe I'll back up and just say, what are some key words in the problem that might help us? What's a key word you notice? Go ahead and unmute and tell me a key word you see. What would be something we would certainly want to highlight or circle? Brass instruments. What about them? Oh, uh, wait. Um I like, so there's brass instruments and yeah. instruments. So good, I like that. You want to know- These are two different ones. Correct, two different ones. Good, I like that. And that, that's gonna key us into using two different variables because they may be the same, they may not be the same. So that's why we're using two different variables. Good job. What are some other key words we wanna make sure that we are paying attention to? Okay. Please repeat. How many? How many? Okay, so we want to find out how many. Um, down here, when we get to that part, how many brass instruments must there be? Okay. In the what? instructions, it says I have to write two different equations. So I might put two equal signs because I know I need to do two equations. I'll put two equal signs. So I might do that right here just to get started. If I'm going to write two equations, I know I'm already going to need two equal signs. What else do we know up in here? What are some facts we know? Start to tell me some things that you know from reading the situation up here. What are some facts? There are a total of 150 brass. I like the total, right? Mm -hmm. A total. total means to me, equal. So tells me that I'm going to have something equal to one total of 150 brass and what 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 symbol could I put with the word and? Addition but I would have put that with total. Oh okay. So you're thinking of addition? Okay. And a total of something then that, then I'm going to be performing addition. So I'm going to be forming addition to find an equal sign. Sounding good. Okay. The only reason I thought subtraction is because it told me I had to do two. And then the fact family. But I missed the word addition. So now I had two different addition equations. So it's only going to be a little bit different. But that's okay because we're going to still use those facts with the subtraction because it's only, even if it doesn't help us answer the question, it's going to help us understand the problem a little bit better too. 
Okay, so let's zoom in right here. There are a total of 150 brass and woodwind instruments. If I could just take this statement, this is a statement, right? And an equation is a statement. Can I take this statement and turn it into symbols? I've got 150 equals for the total of 150. What could I put to take the place of those words? Brass and woodwind instruments. What can I put here to take that place? There are, remember R is like another word for is. Is would mean equal. And I guess I'm gonna, I like that idea of total being an add. Something's equal. What is 150? What can I put here in here for the symbols to go with this? Come on guys, it's right there. Instead B. of writing brass instruments, what could I write? B. B. Instead of writing woodwind instruments, what could I write? W. Perfect, so here's one of my equations right here. There is, is, R is, it means equal. There are a total of 150. This 150 is brass and woodwinds. That's one of my equations. Now, I like the idea of thinking about some, some different subtraction equations I could write. What well, could be a subtraction equation I could write just using this fact right here? One hundred fifty minus B equals W. So another way to say that is if I took one hundred fifty and I took away how much was in the brass, I would know what was left for the woodwind, right? And I guess I could go the other way then. I could say the same thing. I'm going to write that neat. No matter what, 150, take away the woodwinds, and I would be left with the brass. So that's just some other things to think about. I guess another addition equation I could write is 150 is equal to woodwinds plus brass. I could write that. And technically, it's different from that, but I didn't really learn any more information. It's like saying I have some apples and some bananas and I have some bananas and some apples. I still didn't learn anything more about bananas and apples. So while that technically could be done, it really doesn't get me any further to getting into this part, finding out how many brass instruments from there must there be. I know that however many brass plus the woodwinds, I hit 150. But from here, I still couldn't tell you how many of each one there are. I don't know, it could be a lot. I could have one brass and 49 woodwinds. I could have two, I could go on for a while. Not forever, but for a while. So there is another statement up here. And maybe I can use that other statement to get another equation going over here. Let's look at that second, that first statement, which is the one we haven't used yet. And it says an orchestra has twice as many woodwind instruments as brass instruments. There's a key word in there. What's a key word that we didn't circle or highlight yet? That tells orchestra? Okay, that's an orchestra it's telling you what kind of thing that's going on. What's a key word that tells me something about some math that I'm going to do? See this total? Twice? Yeah, this total told us about plus. What's the word that you said? Twice. Twice. That's a key word. Now, what does twice mean? Two. It means sort of two. It means, what's another word twice? I could say what? Double. What's another way of saying that with, with the two? It means I have two of them, right? I have two sets of them. I have double or two times. So. Twice, when I see twice, it means two times. I'd rather show it as the dot, or two times those. What is twice as many? What do I know? What's twice? Twice as many woodwind as brass. So I know I have a two times here, and I know on one side I'm going to have the woodwinds, and one side I'm going to have the brass. Which is more, the woodwinds or the brass? Mm. That statement has twice as many woodwinds. Which is more, woodwinds or brass? Woodwinds. Okay, so then I would round and write it, woodwinds is twice the brass. If it was the other way, I would say brass is two times the
the wood ones. But since I know I have more and two times something is more, that's the way I want to write it. Now I have another relationship here. Oh, but it said an, an addition equation. So is this an addition equation? Nope. No. So how can I write this so I can get an addition equation? Because it's not quite yet, but it does deepen my understanding. How can I write that to help me? An addition equation. W doesn't equal 2B. No, W does equal 2B, but that's a multiplication. So now I need, I'm going to need my 150 back for sure. Why don't we start with that 150? Let's go with this fact. We know this is true. 150 is base, as brass, sorry, plus W got back in the base thing. All right, but now I also know, not only is this true, but I also know that W is 2 times B. So I could rewrite that. Instead of writing W, I could put in 2 times B is equal to, are you seeing okay? I'm making sure. 150 is base plus, but instead of putting W in, I'm going to put in 2 times B or just 2B. Remember, put together means multiply. That's an addition equation. Now I could, I know I can, so this is the addition equation I want. I know I can combine like terms. I have, remember this is invisible one here. I have an invisible one. One B and two Bs would be three Bs. Again, not an addition equation, but still helping me understand what's going on. So that's an addition equation over here. Basing the wood ones together make 150. And I know that 150 is one base plus two bases. So I did the first part. Now we need to know how many brass instruments must there be. I know, I know, I know. How do you, what do you know? Who's got an idea? Mrs. Nelson, you can share. Well, I'm going to leave it for somebody else. Somebody else, else out there must know the answer to this. Here's some facts we know. All of these are facts. Here's some facts we know. So as I'm thinking, I'm going to write down some facts. I know that there are a total of 150 brass and woodwind instruments. I know that 150 is equal to 3B. I know this fact, which is the same, which is, okay, so I know that that's 1B, plus two Bs, so 150 is three Bs. How can we figure out how many brass instruments there are? How many are? And then how, or how many, we figure out how many woodwinds there are. I have to use both of these facts. These are all things I know. All of these are things I know. If I knew Based on this, if I knew how many brass instruments there were, I could easily figure out W, right? Because all I have to do is put that number for brass and take away from 150. Mm -hmm. so this is all helpful information, even though it didn't answer part one. What do we know that will help us figure it out? Why not? solve that equation and everybody here should know how to solve that one. Here's what we want to look for. To solve an equation you really want to find where you have only one variable and everything else constants. We put that right here. I have one variable and I have constants. Nobody out there can explain how to do this problem? Is that true? Oh my goodness. So I know 150 is three Bs. I could write it another way. It's a certain number of brass plus a certain number of brass plus a certain number of brass. And all of these have to be the same number. What is that number that this number plus the self again plus itself again would be 150? What would that number have to be? Okay, so we're gonna- 50. 50? You say B is 50, was that you, Carissa? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're thinking B is 50. Would this be true? Is it true that 50 plus 50 plus 50 
it's a hundred. I know yeah. 100 and that's 50. Krista, how did you come up with that? Because it took, it took us a little bit of thinking. How did you determine it was 50? 150 divided by three is 50. Thank you, and I'm glad you said that. All right, so B is 50. So it wasn't a guess what you were thinking of. Let me see if I can get that in the thought bubble over here. Make sure you can see it. Okay, I'm gonna kick my stand over. Okay, so if you know this fact that off 150 is three times B, you said that then B should be 150 divided by three. Is that true? 150 divided by three. So if we're thinking about it this way, let me do show it another way. Here I have B times three and here I have 150. If I want to just have B by itself, remember that video we saw this morning where we said we just want B. I don't want to know what three sets of B are, I want to know what one is. So to get rid of multiplication of three, I can divide by three. If I divide this side by three, I have to do it here. So this side of the equation becomes B and this side becomes 150 divided by three. I could write it as 150 divided by three. I could write it as 150 divided by three. That would be B. So that would work if we didn't have whole numbers. All right, so B is 50. Well, now I can use this equation. Okay, well, B is 50. Now I can use this relationship here. So if I know that 150 is 50 plus W, to figure out what W is, take away 50 from this side, take away 50 from this side. Again, whatever I do on one side of the equation, I have to do the other. Whatever operation I do, if I subtract 50 or divide by 50, I have to do it to both. So this becomes 100, and this side becomes just W. W plus 50, take away 50 is just, 50 is just 100. So W is 100, and B is 50. And if I put them back in here together, 50 and 100 make back 150. What is the most challenging part of this kind of problem, do you think? Finding out what B and W was. Well, that's the whole problem. What made that problem hard? I agree with you. What made that difficult? What's, what's difficult with that? It requires multiple steps. Mm -hmm. It does require multiple steps, a lot of multiple steps. And I think that second step is the hardest, figuring out what W is. Like how to write W equals the 2B and then put that back in the original. Because at first it looks funny to have two Bs. Like it looks funny to have one B plus two B. Right here, this looks funny, I yeah. agree. It just looks funny, but it's right because in order to find B, you need to know what it, like if you, like you said, if it's B plus W, there's a lot of answers to that one, right? You know, 50. Exactly. That's 145, but that's not going to give us the double part of it. So I think that part is challenging part. It's finding the relationship between the two. Definitely. And this is definitely something that next year you will definitely be building on quite a bit more. So if there's one, one an equation with just one variable, you can solve it. You have to undo the operation, the inverse, we call it. Mr. Berger said undo. He's really thinking about the inverse. If I'm multiplying by three, I want to do the inverse, which is divide. If I'm adding right here, once I had one equation and one variable and it was added to, I want to subtract. So I'm kind of thinking about unraveling it or mostly thinking about the, the opposite operation, the inverse. If I have two variables and an equation, I can give you a lot of supposings. It could be this, it could be that, it could be this. I could give you a list of things it could be, but I would need two equations if I have two variables. I need two facts. I need some more information. 
to do that. I never thought about that until you said that this morning, right? Like I wasn't thinking of it that way. I, that you need, if you have two variables, you need two equations. And if you had third variable, then you'd have to have another relationship. So there would have to be three parts to the um, three parts, three equations that you would need. Exactly. Okay. If you have another variable, you need another independent fact. Just by so saying switching them around, W plus B didn't give me any more. Yeah, because just B plus W just gives you a whole function table, right? Like there, there's a limited amount of answers because eventually you get to 150, but you would have like one plus 149, two plus 148, three plus 147, and you'd end up with a lot of answers. And then you could do the same thing on the other one, right? 147 plus two. <laughs> so, yeah. Craziness. It's but, does anybody have any wonderings? What else might you be wondering about the math from today? Any wonderings or comments? This is one of the harder problems. We took the higher order problems. So we were Are we going to have problems like this in our slideshows? No, no. We wanted to make sure we did the hardest ones with you. In the slideshow, we wanted to give you ones mm -hmm. that you could be very successful with. Okay. So, but do take a look at them and take a look at them right now. We're happy to help with anything off the slideshow too. That's what we're here for. We are in the work. They are in the work because you have to do this kind of work to really understand what's happening. And that is math live with SNL.